very happy to be here also. I'm uh, from Moncton, the other bilingual city in Canada. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk today about, we're going to talk today about international students, les étudiants étrangers. Et j'aimerais peut-être euh, commencer par illustrer l'importance des étudiants euh, étrangers au Canada. And I'm going to tell a little story coming from uh, where I work, uh, l'Université de Moncton. I work in a, in a small department. And most of our students over the years were uh, Acadians, les Cormier, les Leblanc. We had former premiers, Bernard Lord, uh, who's uh, well known in Ottawa also. Uh, and over these years, we had a few international students, uh, three or four. They were uh, coming from certain countries, but I mean, they were single individuals uh, just passing by and not really staying uh, in Moncton after or even thinking of staying in the region. So they were coming. Most of them had scholarships probably from their country and they were going back. But I would say over the years and in recent years, things have really changed. Now, when we look at universities all across the country, big universities, but where I come from, Atlantic Canada, 17 universities, colleges, we saw in the last five years really a rise of the number of international students. So when I look at my department, I would say today, and we had numbers last year, it's half and half. We have a department that has 50% of its population coming from countries such as Mali, Guinea, Tunisia, even France. But we have now a new challenge in, 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 the, envi in the environment of universities when we think that we have uh, students coming from different countries, coming in smaller universities, larger universities, and, and, and making uh, the, the environment different. So we have challenges. Uh, when you have a department that's half and half, you have issues of integration in the classroom. You have issues of in integration and inclusion on campus. You have these issues also in the city. So I think when we, when we, when we talk about international students, we, we, say, we always think that it's recruitment of international students, and I think universities are doing a lot. When we, when we, when we think of recruitment, we, we need also to talk about integration and inclusion, and it's in the classroom, on campus, and in the city. And then the harder question is retention. Now, recently also we know in our country, uh, de nos jours, les étudiants internationaux donc, sont perçus comme des candidats idéaux à l'immigration. Et il suffit de voir l'évolution des politiques, des programmes depuis une dizaine d'années. C'est phénoménal aussi au Canada. Le Canada est devenu un pays qui a développé des politiques, des programmes assez, assez innovateurs. On pense à tout ce qui se fait autour de, de donner à des étudiants internationaux une expérience de travail canadienne. C'est donc les permis, tous les permis qui se sont développés depuis une dizaine d'années. Et aussi toute la question de faciliter la transition. Donc l'étudiant, on veut faciliter sa transition. Donc dans le contexte d'une ville comme Ottawa, c'est évident que la question des étudiants internationaux devient aussi très intéressante. And I think you had these numbers in, in, uh, in, your, in the material. I mean, in the last five years, the, the increasing percentage of international students in Ottawa, it's 43%. Uh, Ottawa is the fourth largest international students destination in Canada. Um, they constitute the major uh, area of migration growth in Ottawa, but also I think it's interesting to, to realize that it's a very competitive business when we think of international students, other cities, other universities, other countries. importance of branding is also a, a key issue here to make the city attractive attractable to make the university known to make the programs known so I think the, the participant of this of our panel this morning uh, will address all these issues uh, permettez-moi de vous les présenter we have one hour it's going to be pretty tight we will we'll try uh, but I will present the participants and they come from various uh, post-secondary in institution in the city. We have Gary Slater, Associate VP of International at University of Ottawa, University of Ottawa. John Nelson, Manager of International Students Office at Carleton University. Uh, Gilles Toussignan, qui est chargé des projets internationaux à la Cité Collégiale. Kristen Peachy, Projects and Partnership Manager 
at Algonquin College. And finally, Mohammed Al Sahdi, Programming Coordinator, International Student Office at Carleton University. So maybe I will ask a first question to our panelists. I will just ask a, a very simple question, maybe to, have to talk about your responsibilities and what happens and what your institution is doing towards international students. So maybe two or three minutes uh, just to be able, and I will start by Christine. So Algonquin College, we have about 18,000 full-time students, about 1,200 international students, and that number continues to grow. Um, and they're coming for ESL programming as well as academic programming, so flowing from ESL into academic. And our top countries are India and China, and those being the largest by far. Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, and Nigeria. Um, in terms of uh, recruitment and uh, support, we, of course, are focusing on factors uh, affecting student success and satisfaction, which in turn can impact recruitment and retention. Um, when we're going out and recruiting international students, we're promoting not only the quality of the education and the applicability of our program to industry needs and the employment <coughs> outcomes of those, but also that Ottawa is a safe community, that it's a diverse multicultural community, uh, cost of living in comparison to some other cities in Canada is more reasonable. So we're focusing on some of those, those factors um, and in terms of recruitment, we have four recruiters that work out of our office, and we work with overseas representatives who we train and make sure they're communicating proper information about uh, the college out to prospective students. And we also have two offices overseas, one in China and one in India, that uh, work not only to recruit students, but also to provide pre-arrival orientation and preparation to students in those communities. Um, we also actually get a lot of students that come from family links already in the community, so we get a few calls every week from uh, individuals in the community already saying, my, my niece wants to come and study at Algonquin, uh, what do we do? So uh, that, that's another uh, big important piece for recruitment. Um, in terms of student support, we uh, really try to focus on several of the factors that do uh, impact uh, student satisfaction and success. Uh, such as social comfort, so cultural adjustment, making new friends in the community, their academic performance and academic support, comfortable accommodations, opportunities to engage with the host country and access recreational activities, uh, financial stabil stability, and of course, they're ultimately looking for a rewarding career. So trying to address those, and that we do through a number of different programs. We have mentor programs where we have uh, international and Canadian <coughs> students, mentor new incoming students, um, we have academic coaching and peer tutoring that's uh, pr provided to students. Um, workshops on things like you know, resume uh, skills, interview skills to prepare students. We offer social and cultural programming to engage them in the local community uh, and get them to know Ottawa a little bit better. Um, there's of course things like orientation both for international students and campus-wide. And we're actually piloting a new program this year uh, with the Indian community and working with individuals from the local Indian community to provide airport pickup, temporary accommodation arrangements for students when they arrive at before classes, assistance in finding local accommodation, so whether that's through our homestay program, residence, or elsewhere, um, and uh, also helping them get set up, get a bank account, get a cell phone, um, do their startup grocery shopping, the, you know, introducing them to grocery stores that may provide some foods that they may be looking for when they uh, when they arrive, and restaurants and things like that that uh, may provide a taste of home and, and make them feel a little bit more comfortable when they get here. So, like I said, we're piloting that this year with the Indian students, but we're really hoping after this year to get the momentum to expand up to uh, our other students, and, and that's just kind of really a taste of some of the things we do. And then, of course, uh, given that 70% of our program students actually have an opportunity to gain work experience, and by 2016, 17, the goal is 100% of students to have experience by the, by the time they leave Algonquin College. So we hope that prepares students and gives them ties to the community and uh, employment opportunities when they leave the college. So. Well, I'm, uh, so I'm at the University of Ottawa. I'm the Associate Vice President International, so in charge of the Indian International Office. I'm not going. To, I'm going to try to give it a, a different flavor, um, uh, just to give you an idea how important international is for universities. I'm in my job. I, I started in July last year, 
Um, this year we've had a 25% increase in number of applicants from other countries. It's the seventh year in a row that we have at least plus 20% increase. So you, you can calculate that this is going exponential. Um, in most countries we have done nothing. No recruitment, no marketing, no publicity, nothing. And it increases really rapidly. So there's something, there is a buzz about Canada, about Ottawa. I hope there's a buzz about the University of Ottawa as well. <laughs> uh, this year, uh, in, in French Africa, we have doubled in most countries and tripled in other countries the number of students who have accepted our offers in one year. Um, last year, the University of Ottawa has uh, made public its uh, strategic plan called Destination 2020. We had what we thought was an aggressive target for 2020 for the number of international students on campus. We will reach that number in September this year. Okay, so, so there is something happening out there. Um, and many of the uh, reasons I think were mentioned, certainly Canada is a safe country and so on. And, and global warming makes winter more acceptable to perhaps, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Une autre chose qu'on fait aussi, c'est de discuter avec euh, des universités étrangères la possibilité d'avoir des programmes en double diplomation qui permettent à des étudiants étrangers et à des étudiants canadiens d'obtenir deux diplômes, un diplôme canadien et un diplôme étranger. Euh, ça lutte aussi contre ce qu'on appelle en anglais le « brain drain uh, ». This is something that many countries are very uh, sensitive to, and, and, and rightly so. Uh, and it's also good for our students to go abroad. Uh, there is a major problem in Canada. Canadian students love their country too much. They don't want to go abroad. Uh, the number of uh, Canadian students going abroad at my university has been stagnant for years, uh, while the number of students on campus has been going up very rapidly. So there is a problem. It's a society problem. And uh, we need new ideas uh, to convince our students to go abroad. In terms of issues, uh, I think we can, we can uh, point to three major issues when uh, uh, foreign students arrive on campus. First is integration in the Canadian society. Second is language. And, and third is education itself. And I'll just say a few words uh, uh, about each. One thing I discovered over the last few months is that although 95% of students who come here to study in English don't have English as their native language. On the French side, it's the exact opposite. 95% of students who come here to study in French have French as their native language. After one year, the dropout rate is exactly the same in both groups. So language is not the only issue. The dropout rate is very, very large. Uh, many students on both sides have problems. So integration is more than language. It's clearly more than language. Um, in terms of education, uh, of course, it's we we always we all have to figure out how similar different education systems are. Um, it's very very difficult. We do the best we can to evaluate the candidates uh, from other countries. Very often, they're not as prepared as we thought they were. Um, they're not as prepared as they thought they were. That's a major issue. Um, there is a mismatch sometimes between the, the education systems and even though we work with international agencies and with the embassies themselves, uh, it is not clear how to, how to prepare students to come to Canada. Finally, uh, another issue that I face uh, on a daily basis, uh, well, it's two different versions of the same issue, on the English side, Foreign students tend to overestimate their, uh, their language abilities. Um, they think they speak English, they think they can read English, and they think they can sit in the classroom and understand everything. Uh, after two weeks, a lot of them panic, and they arrive in our office, and they explain to us that they're not as bilingual or trilingual as they thought. 
Uh, that's a major, a major issue. Du côté français, uh, comme je l'ai dit tout à l'heure, 95 de nos étudiants qui viennent ici en, pour étudier en français ont le français comme langue maternelle, mais ils ne parlent pas avec le même accent que moi. Uh, donc, ils ont des petits problèmes d'ajustement uh, avec le vocabulaire et l'accent. Uh, et ça, ça, part, ça prend un certain temps, mais uh, en général, on passe par-dessus ça. Le problème de la linguistique en français n'est pas aussi euh, grand qu'en anglais, comme je l'ai expliqué. C'est un grand, grand euh, problème. Um, there's nothing worse than trying to help uh, somebody against his own will. Uh, it's extremely difficult to convince a student to take English classes uh, when they think they don't need it. Very, very, very difficult. Uh, so we're really looking seriously at the possibility of making English classes compulsory for all students who want to study in English because they all tend to overestimate their abilities. That's a very, very big issue in our study. Well, uh, in uh, International Student Center, part of uh, Carlton University Student Association, uh, I work as the uh, programming coordinator and uh, in our office we started to see that, and this is actually what we believe, uh, that getting involved with the community is the best way to integrate with the community. So uh, the thing that we started to notice, uh, my, uh, myself and my friend uh, Alvin, my co-worker, that most of the international students hesitate to get involved in the community until then second or third year, which if they don't get, get involved by that time, mostly they get into the decision of somehow leaving the country or they don't want to stay anymore. I have a couple of uh, international student friends, close friends, who uh, actually graduated uh, this semester or uh, next semester. While I was talking, okay, what's your next plan? What do you want to do? Uh, you want to stay in the country, work, find, find a job? Some of them said, we don't even, even uh, attend our graduation ceremony. We just want to leave the country right away. And if you focus on the, those people, mostly you're going to see that the, they're not involved in any way in the community. So all what they do is just focusing on school, which is, which is not uh, wrong, by the way. But in order to integrate to the community and make it uh, the most benefit, out of the international students and the great diversity in Ottawa, we start to see that being involved and helping the community is the best way to do so. Uh, the way we do this is basically simple because we're a group of students. I'm an international student myself uh, in my, between my third and fourth year in economics. The best way to do this and to get international students to go out of, their, com out, out of their, uh, their comfort zone and to come and help a community is by getting involved. And the way we do is we have a small office and we majorly known as the little brother and the casual part of the International Student Center, uh, sorry, International Student Service Office led by John Nelson. Uh, we have a small office where international student would come, would just speak their mind, uh, tell you their problems. I sometimes I hear some of the problems and immigrations, visas, they just speak, you know, they just let it go. Uh, we have, we do events, right? The events, it's one of the ways that get them involved. And we believe that anything that we do in the school is a two-way relationship, so give and take. So we strongly know, uh, believe that if most of the international students, if there is nothing that they gain from being involved, mostly they're not going to involve. So uh, we've been working closely with the uh, Student Success Center in Carleton University. So in, in creating some, uh, what's called as co-curricular activities. So if they get involved, they actually can take whatever they've done and put it in their resume. So they can actually develop themselves. So uh, we help them to develop themselves and therefore give back to the community and de develop the community. Uh, and at the end we hold 
what is known as basically in, uh, in our campus as the classi classiest and the most elegant event on the school, which is the International Student Gala. From its day, most of the people would think it's just for international students. But it's for everybody, even for local students, to come and join our diversity. So they all across the world, all across the world, out of performances, African, European, everything. And it's actually a good time for international students and local students to come together and talk. And you've been amazed by, at the end of the event, how many people said, who, uh, how this event was put together and organized and we tell them it's by the International Student Center and they, mo most of the time they would say, do we have such thing? So uh, it's not a problem only with international students but also with the local students. So we're trying to bridge in between but we're focusing and in do, in doing so on the international students, uh, international students by themselves. Euh, en partant, on doit vous avertir comme quoi que notre recrutement se fait dans les pays de la francophonie, principalement, qui veut dire principalement l'Afrique, Haïti et, et euh, l'Europe. Euh, notre répartition, principalement, vient de l'Afrique, autant du Maghreb que de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, que de l'Afrique centrale et un peu de l'Afrique de l'Est. Ça représente environ 70% de nos étudiants internationaux. Euh, quand on fait du recrutement à l'international, il y a un mot qui nous revient toujours en tête chez nous, c'est « encadrement, accompagnement, encadrement, accompagnement ». Ces gens-là, quand on les, au moment où ils nous font une manifestation d'un intérêt de venir étudier chez nous, on les prend presque par la main pour les, pour les guider, pour arriver jusque chez nous. Euh, et on doit comprendre aussi qu'on euh, qu qu travaille avec, une, avec différentes cultures où ce que le niveau familial où ce que le, est très, très important. Euh, ces enfants-là, qui sont 18 ans, même s'ils ont 18 ans, dans les yeux de ces parents-là, sont encore des enfants. Ce qui veut dire qu'ils nous confient ces personnes-là et, et on doit en prendre soin. Et pour ça, l'encadrement et l'accompagnement est très, très important. Tant au niveau de l'accueillir à l'aéroport, tant au niveau de lui trouver un logement ou de l'aider à l'accompagner, arriver ici, d'ouvrir un compte bancaire avec lui, d'aller faire une ordre d'épicerie, OK? Toutes ces choses-là doivent être apprises et on se fait une, euh, un devoir, justement, de bien les accompagner par rapport à ça. Une fois qu'ils arrivent ici, ils ont une série d'ateliers aussi, okay, en plus de leur, de leur cursus scolaire, où ce qu'on les accompagne, première neige, okay, premier hiver. On arrive de Guinée ou on arrive du Sénégal, première fois qu'on voit de la neige, comment on va s'habiller, où est-ce qu'on va acheter notre linge. Okay? Toutes ces choses-là, on leur montre comment s'intégrer par rapport à ça. Okay? Des fois, ça peut être aussi banal que quelqu'un ne retrouve pas sa nourriture locale. Okay? Et à Ottawa, c'est est, est merveilleux par rapport à ça. Il y a de plus en plus de magasins d'alimentation, de magasins où on peut se procurer de la nourriture ou des, des choses de base qu'on retrouve dans différents pays. Ça nous est arrivé qu'il y a quelqu'un qui venait d'un pays où ce que c'est notre baissait uniquement parce qu'elle ne trouvait pas la nourriture chez nous assez bonne pour elle. C'est correct. Il n'y a aucun problème par rapport à ça. Aussitôt qu'on lui a indiqué les petites épiceries où ce qu'elle pouvait retrouver différents, les notes ont augmenté. Okay? C'est pour ça que je dis l'encadrement, l'accompagnement, c'est quelque chose d'important chez, chez nous. On va leur faire un, un, un parrainage avec d'autres personnes qui viennent idéalement de leur pays d'origine aussi, pour les accompagner par rapport à ça. On va leur donner des ateliers sur comment s'intégrer sur le marché de l'emploi aussi. En fait, on a toute une série d'ateliers, autant pendant et à la fin de leur étude, pour intégrer le marché de, de l'emploi. Par contre, on sait que la plupart d'entre eux veulent intégrer le marché de l'emploi. Certains veulent retourner à la maison, d'autres veulent rester ici, et c'est la majorité. À partir de là aussi, c'est qu'on fait beaucoup de, de recrutement via euh, les, les ambassades du Canada. Les ambassades du Canada, dans, différents, dans plusieurs pays, organisent des foires, le Salon de l'éducation, le programme Imagine, et on assiste avec les ambassades 
dans ces, dans, dans ces foires-là, qui veut dire qu'à l'automne, on va pour, pour le Maghreb, et à l'hiver, au mois de janvier, qui est un très bon temps pour aller euh, faire des foires en Afrique, euh, <rire> où ce que là, on peut euh, aller faire toute l'Afrique de l'Ouest et une partie de l'Afrique centrale aussi. Cet appui-là, au niveau des ambassades, elle est très importante pour nous, parce que c'est pour souvent pour les parents et pour les étudiants, c'est un gage de sécurité. Okay? Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de personnes qui se promènent un peu partout sur la planète et qui font juste faire des, des grandes promesses au niveau des, des études internationales. Et il y a beaucoup de fraudeurs aussi par rapport à ça. Et de s'associer avec l'ambassade du Canada dans ces pays-là pour participer à l'Ivoire, c'est une gage de sécurité aussi. Euh, quand on fait du, du recrutement, on leur dit souvent aussi comme quoi qu'on a un taux de placement très élevé qui veut dire comme quoi qu'ils peuvent se trouver un emploi par la suite et grâce aussi à toutes les, les initiatives du gouvernement du, du Canada pour inciter justement les nouveaux, euh, les, les étudiants à devenir une nouvelle forme d'immigration et privilégiée, ça nous aide aussi au niveau de la vente par rapport, par rapport à ça. Euh, On fait aussi certaines foires privées, okay, principalement au Maghreb, pour faire plus de, de recrutement par rapport à ça. Dernière chose, avec tout l'encadrement, et euh, il y a aussi des étudiants euh, internationaux, euh, dont certains sont, sont devenus tutorats chez nous. On dit souvent qu'on peut que c'est eux qui ont besoin de, de tutorats. On a des étudiants qui sont dans deuxième, troisième année en informatique, et c'est eux qui donnent du tutorat à d'autres. Ça fait que c'est au niveau de. Les coordonnateurs sont, sont invités à souligner à l'équipe de l'international aussitôt qu'il y a une baisse de notes au niveau des étudiants internationaux parce qu'ils sont ici pour réussir. Et notre souci, c'est justement qu'ils réussissent leur étude chez nous parce que s'ils réussissent, ils vont pouvoir s'intégrer dans notre communauté. Hello everyone, my name is John Nelson. I manage the International Student Services Office at Carleton University. So Carleton has been growing uh, fairly quickly. We're sitting right now at approximately 27,000 students, and just over 11% of those students are international students. So I run a very small office, but we tend to work a lot with the other departments on campus because our big focus is on student experience. Um, for those of you who live in Ottawa, um, I know there are a couple months of the year when it's not advisable that you wear shorts outside. Um, there's a lot of white stuff. One of the things that we've noticed uh, with a lot of our international students coming is they're not used to the winter. Uh, so one of the things that we always push is, um, yes, there are many places in many universities where you can go and get a degree. Uh, when you come to Carleton, you can do it at least in your first year without going outside, if you have to. Um, we are really lucky because mo the majority of our buildings are connected underground by tunnels, so it's always a big selling point for anyone who comes from the Caribbean or comes from Africa. Um, jokes aside, uh, we do have very, very strong programs, incredible professors. When we're doing our recruitment, we tend to work a lot with um, international agents and Hi, we do high school visits, but we usually try to get uh, people who have demonstrated excellence in terms of the kind of students that they're able to send abroad. Uh, we look at their academic performance and that sort of thing, because when they come to Carleton, it's still very competitive. They have to be able to perform from day one when they actually arrive. When they are, when we're recruiting students and then they decide, okay, yes, we're going to apply to your university, we sent in our acceptance uh, letter, we actually start talking to them prior to them arriving in, in Ottawa. So we have up-year students who send emails back and forth. They're on Facebook if they're from a uh, country that has Facebook. Um, for a lot of others, we use Mebo chat. So the students can actually get a feel for what they're going to get involved in when they come to Ottawa. We have an airport pickup program for the week prior to classes beginning so that we can get the students from there to campus. And we have our orientation program, which is set up a day before the typical moving weekend because we know a lot of the international students are usually overwhelmed. There's a new country, new food, new people. There are a lot of things to actually get used to. So we bring our students in for one full day where we actually introduce them to campus. We do campus tours, we do presentations on uh, an introduction to the Canadian classroom, learning about plagiarism, learning about the things that tend to trip up students and cause a little bit of difficulty later in the academic year. After that, we go through our orientation program. They tour Ottawa, they tour campus. They get to meet uh, both international and Local, student, local domestic students, and then we start to focus on the student experience from that point on. We have really, really strong student services at Carleton. We try to make sure that the students have an opportunity to take advantage of as many things as possible. We work a lot with the International Student Center to make sure that they're connected uh, when they're doing events. We take them rafting, we take them skiing. If they're 
brave enough to go do that. Um, but there, there are a lot of little things that we tend to take for granted that the international students are facing when they come in in their first year. By pairing them with mentors, we give them an opportunity to not necessarily have to come into the International Student Services Office for help, but they can talk to someone that they can call a big brother or big sister who comes either from Canada or from another country and has already been through what they're experiencing. So that's, those are uh, some of the things that we're trying to focus on. A lot of the majority of our international students come from regions uh, Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, Africa, Asia, India, but we try to get them as integrated as possible with all of the other students all the way through the years. Uh, from second and third year, we can notice a lot of the students who would more likely take advantage of services in their first year, they don't necessarily want to continue doing it in second and third. We try to get them to shift the focus from integration and transition in first year, so you're integrating into the Carleton community, into Ottawa, uh, and then after that, you need to start thinking about your career. It's more than just, I want to get a degree, I need to decide if I want to stay in Canada, if I'm going to go back home. Start thinking about getting a job afterwards, getting into grad school, getting into med school, whatever your goals are, we like to try and find out what that is uh, and sort of push them in the right direction. Uh, so a big focus for us has been on student experience. What we also noticed recently is a lot of our students come with their families. So um, I know a few people had mentioned language. Um, we are, we have one of the highest TOEFL cutoffs, I think for a lot of other universities, both for exchange and for international students. And it's even higher if they want to apply for courses where there's a lot of writing, so NIPSIA and uh, public affairs and journalism. So one of the things we've done with our students is once they meet that cutoff, we still give them an opportunity to practice as much as possible. And because family is usually such an important part of uh, the majority of immigrants' lives, we also have some of those groups where they can bring their families along and sort of chat and then go out and actually do activities. So one of the biggest things that we push for our students is making sure that they have a good Carlton experience. Thank you. Uh, this is a very interesting overview of, uh, of all the, of uh, what's happening in Ottawa. I'm gonna actually, we have five minutes before opening the floor and I want really to open the floor for, for questions. So uh, maybe when one last question, you don't have to, uh, it can be one or two. Uh, I don't need to go up uh, through the, the panelists here, but uh, we know that, I mean, you, you discussed what happens on campus, in universities, there's a lot of best practices, uh, uh, how to deal with uh, isolation of students, uh, interconnections uh, with Canadian students, bridging, uh, but maybe let's go further in, in the challenges that we could see uh, universities interacting with other stakeholders, uh, just the municipality, the settlement agencies, uh, uh, all the other things. So when, when cities, when universities are located in certain cities, there is this connection that happens. I, I'll give you one example. My city, Moncton, the, the campus is now 17% diversified with international students. The city has maybe 3% of immigrants. So the city is really less uh, uh, diverse than the campus. So there's, uh, I mean, Ottawa, I think it would be a different case where you're in the context of diversity in the city, but what are the challenges in, in bringing the university closer, or what, maybe, could you give me a few examples of, of practices, of connections, university and other stakeholders? I don't think I'm going to answer your question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Let me get, tell you three things about the city of Ottawa and the province of Ontario from our point of view. Um, on the French side um, of the University of Ottawa, one third of our students uh, study in French. Uh, in the University of 43,000, that's a lot of students. Um, we sell the university, the, uh, the city of Ottawa and the, the country as a bilingual place, right? Uh, the students arrive from Africa, they work in the, they, they walk through the city, they cannot see any French. Okay, the stores, it's unilingual, you get into a restaurant. Have you tried to find a bilingual menu in Ottawa, even on Star Street? And we sell the city as a bilingual place, but is it? It's a huge surprise to many people who come here. It is not bilingual, uh, as much as we think it is. For those, those of you who, uh, who are Anglophones, try to find a menu in French in Ottawa. There are not that many places. 
you can find menus in southern languages in Prague, a unilingual country, and you have a hard time finding a bilingual menu in the capital of a bilingual country. Um, so that's a major problem. <laughs> On the plus side, <laughs> one question I've been asked several times abroad is the following. Uh, and, and we're talking about what we call visible minorities in this country. Parents ask me, if my child goes to Ottawa, will it be obvious that my child is an immigrant, is from another country? And of course, the answer is no. Uh, the city here is already full of people from different parts of the world. When I walk on the campus, I have no idea who is a, a current you know, Chinese Canadian, or a new student from China, a, a African Canadian, or a new arrival, uh, a new student from Africa. And that is very positive in the mind of, of parents around the world. So this is something that's really great about a city like Ottawa, of course Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, and so on would, would say the same thing. And the final thing is, uh, is an unfortunate thing uh, for those of you who don't know that, uh, in Ontario, the, our government does not fund universities for international students, unlike other provinces. So when we take international students, we have to fund the cost through the general budget of the university. We have no funding from the province. It's a big, big struggle for universities. And this is not something that makes uh, international student attractive to the bean counters. Uh, because we're very often actually losing money with international students. We want international students, but we're not making money with international students on our campuses. That is not very well understood uh, by the general public in Ontario. You may remember the last uh, provincial campaign, the Liberal announced something, a small scholarship for international students. I was abroad when that happened. I couldn't believe what I was reading. On, on the websites, the reaction of the Conservative Party of Ontario to this, and the issue it became uh, in, in the political campaign. So, so we have a, a, a problem in Ontario with that at the uh, education level, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. 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 Plus que, les plus que la ville va travailler avec les communautés des différentes, des différentes communautés, soit sénégalaise, guinéenne, haïtienne, peu, peu importe, ces réseaux-là sont un réseau très important pour influencer les étudiants à venir s'inscrire dans nos institutions. Parce que, tant, parce que si on a un oncle, si on a une tante, si on a un cousin, quelque chose ressemblable à ça, c'est très important pour eux d'aller vers ces, vers ces, ces régions-là par rapport à ça. No, I, was, I just wanted to say that I, I do think there's great opportunity to partner across the universities and colleges in the city and with other agencies and organizations within the city to uh, provide opportunities and experiences for our students to further engage them in the community during their time here. Um, I know in Toronto, for example, they all the, the colleges and universities do a great job. They do a joint uh, airport reception for students and, and there's a few different programs that they do together. So maybe opportunities like that. There was a few years ago, Oak Creek uh, spearheaded a international student welcome. Um, I'm not sure what happened to that, it, it sort of fizzled out, but, but things like that to make students feel welcome, to connect them with students from other colleges and universities, with other uh, individuals in the community, I think are uh, a great opportunity, and I think also for uh, everyone has stretched resources, so bringing everybody's resources together can uh, Merci. On a 12 minutes environ, 12 minutes for questions, comments. So I invite to be brief in your questions or comments. So we have a chance to hear a few. Clara Jimeno from the Social Planning Council of Ottawa. I find very interesting your presentation on international students, but a bit uh, difficult the separation with domestic and international students because in Canada we have a special group of uh, 
professionals who are international professionals, are immigrants, are, and are going to the same places that you define, isolated, not enough knowledge of the official language, English or French, need to set goals, need to access employment. And uh, I wonder if in the program that you are uh, leading, are there some interactions to support those type of international foreign students that are forced to go back to college or to university because the foreign uh, credentials are not recognized? So, At Algonquin College, we do not within the international office. The international office is devoted to international students, but we do have an office that uh, does support. So we have the office will support um, people who are returning to work later in their careers, or whether they be immigrants, whether they be Canadian citizens. So we do have that office that does provide that sort of support to to individuals within the community. Uh, Carlton as well. We also have an office. For that. <laughs> Any of those uh, students who are international uh, students but coming back after transferring to Ottawa and having to come back and do a second degree, that they come through the International Student Services Office and we've also sent a lot of them to career services so that while they're studying they can start to plan what, the, what they want to do after they graduate. To be able to hear all the questions, I'm gonna, we're going to take all the questions and then maybe we can answer, so take notes. Uh, actually, my question started as a, just a little project at my college. I'm from the Cité Collégiale, and I was doing some search engine optimization uh, to try and better position my college on Google and whatnot. And so we sent out a survey. What I wanted to know was, when you decided, when you started being open to the idea of studying abroad, what is the first thing you typed in a search engine? And the results I got were actually quite shocking. And now, in light of what's coming down south, a little worrisome, and I think we should be proactive rather than reactive. What I found is that 80% of my answers were falling in the same category. I was seeing stuff like Notre Dame, MIT, Carnegie Mellon, UCLA. Now our best friend was their second search. Carnegie Mellon, tuition fees. <laughs> Notre Dame, tuition fees. And then they started looking elsewhere. But, and we, I mean, we also have advantages here with the, uh, you know, the, the, the pathway to Canadian experience, the, the Canadian experience pathway to immigration. But the states uh, on the employer side are actually starting, the light is coming on, and they're panicking. And so you've got the, the John Ellisons of the world, the, the Bill Gates, petitioning the US government to do the same thing. So right now we've got a leg up, but soon we won't. And they're gonna start stealing from our recruits. And I was wondering, what can we do to reposition ourselves so that the first search that they do is the city is young. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. My name is uh, Oscar Blanco. Um, I've been here like uh, 20 winters. <laughs> and uh, I congratulate the uh, panelists and I urge you uh, to be sincere and compassionate for the thing you talk about, international students. I am one of the people called ambassador to recruitment for uh, students, especially from Africa. So the thing you are talking about, I know it, but I'm not hearing you putting the, uh, uh, the stress on the challenges that the international students face in this country, especially in Ottawa. You know that Ottawa is a government town. Once these international students come here, they have difficulties to find even a part-time job especially those who are in unilingual colleges. They finish the class. They have the intention to stay in Canada 
because they have Canadian experience, but they cannot find job in Ottawa. It's, that is challenging. The other challenge that they face is um, having this visa and dealing with ambassadors here in uh, Ottawa is not easy. Some countries are favorable to get visa. Others, they spend time and time and money. I want you to be aware of that. And the best way to have the people integrated in the community is either to give them access to education, which you do very well, or give them kind of jobs so that they can know the country in which they are in. So I will finish to say that I would like you to be sincere and open to talk about difficulties, especially you say uh, people who come here, they tend to be um, well uh, knowledgeable and more, educa more educated. That's true. That's true. And even the language they speak, even if you don't understand it well, but they also don't understand the language you speak. What do you do for them to understand it? Thank you. parce que c'est un moyen d'agrandir la population. Et, et ma question, et j'entends des bonnes choses, je disais que, euh, sur Twitter ce matin, je suis ici, j'apprends des belles choses en termes de, de, des programmes d'accueil. Et, et mon autre préambule, c'est que j'ai fait une carrière d'éducation. La dernière fois que j'ai regardé, les conseils scolaires, les universités allaient au recrutement international pour gonfler des nombres et aussi pour faire des, des clashes de revenus. On me dit qu'il n'y a pas de subvention, mais il y, a, il y a quelque chose. La question qui tue, comme dirait Guillaume Lepage, est-ce que les institutions post-secondaires, on est dans le recrutement international pour l'institution ou pour favoriser l'immigration? Selon la réponse, ça change toute la mécanique de ce qu'on fait. Um, I'm a recent immigrant to Ottawa, and I've only spent one winter here. Um, but it's just, I have a follow-up, basically, to the question of the gentleman before me, was that international students are basically competing in a market which is flooded with domestic um, applicants. Um, and so how does one expect somebody who's been here only four years as a student, not even as a resident, to compete and come out in a market with a lot of other domestic Canadians who are born and bred here, who are families live here, who have who know the system and how it works, government, non-government, everything. Um, how do you plan to bridge that gap? And if you talk about retention of international students, um, they have to go through a legal process to first live and work here, which a lot of others don't. So they're competing quite unfairly with a different segment of the Canadian market, which has an edge and an advantage over them. wondering, uh, do you guys have any opinions on why this is and how that can be stopped? Because I definitely believe it's important for Canadian students to have those experiences to help build culture and a sense of community, especially for students coming abroad here. Uh, I know myself as a recent graduate, for most people it's a financial burden. For you to leave your job here and go abroad, like that's a lot, but maybe there are other burdens or other ways that we could uh, make it more accessible. The last question. Yeah, it's sort of a comment and a question. I worked um, in Montreal at University in Siege of Campuses for 22 years. And I've been in Ottawa about 16 or 17 years. And I would like to thank um, Gary Slater, because, and I think the panel too, and I think there are ideas and thoughts that are being brought forward. There's really self-critical of where we are. We often think of ourselves as being this dynamic, welcoming community, and I think we clearly point out where we're not. And I want to give you some examples. I think what I would like is if Poland can take some notes of these discussions and see where we could intervene. For example, the bilingual menu, menus, um, 
give an example of when I was in Montreal, McGill University, the quota of foreign students were 25% of the population 18 years ago. And I think they're now up to one third, and they're overwhelmed. But they have a policy of enriching the culture and the society. And I wonder if you could identify some other areas where we can be proactive. The third one is provincial. Quebec has a policy, many of the uh, Quebec students want to learn abroad, and they get full, um, you know, the Quebec uh, equivalent to um, OSAP. They, they get subsidized, they get grants, they get scholarships, government specifically to study abroad. Ontario doesn't do that, and I think it, it's a problem in terms of the point of enriching our society with having our students go abroad, because we don't have that culture, and we don't have the institutions nurturing it. So if you have other ideas of where we should be going to be more inclusive and more open, I'd appreciate that. One of the things that we've noticed is a lot of the students who would actually be willing to, to travel can actually afford to do it. Uh, so one of the things that Carlton is doing right now is we have money set aside to help some of those domestic students go abroad. What there's some, like the Ontario University of National, like they have a few programs in France, China, India, and um, Germany where students can actually apply for bursaries to go. For some of our other partners, we're giving our other domestic students an opportunity to actually go do that. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're actually pushing internationalization at home. So you don't necessarily have to travel in order to get that international experience if you're able to capitalize on the international students who are already here on campus. So we are starting to look at activities that we can actually bring those students together. And that's something that we're, we're hoping will help either get domestic students interested in traveling and, and at the same time help our international students to make friends on campus and get connected. Um, one of the other things that was brought up was um, the challenge with language in Ottawa. Um, a lot of people have that challenge. I myself, I'm originally from the Caribbean, but I was one of the people that fell through the cracks because I was a Canadian citizen coming from abroad, so no one actually took me through all the things that the other international students went to. But I knew, I had done five years of high school Spanish, uh, high school French, because I had to, um, not because I wanted to. But when I got here, I went to the University of Ottawa originally, and everybody was, in my opinion, everyone was bilingual, so I squeezed in a few of the French courses that I could do, started watching French television, and that's how my French improved. However, going back to Carlton, I've lost a lot of it because I'm not using it all the time. But it's just um, either trying to pick up a second language or finding those areas on campus, or, or in, sorry, not on campus, in Canada, where French isn't that much, isn't as important, it, it's a major challenge for you to learn a language, because not everyone can learn a language when they're older. So that's one of the things that we've started been pushing our students to really tailor where they go after they graduate. Just a few questions. Uh, <clears throat> I've given talk on behalf of the University of Ottawa, of uh, Ontario and Canada and around the world. I was the Dean of Graduate Studies at my university for seven years. And I can tell you the first thing I sell is Canada. You know, if, you, if I cannot sell Canada, I cannot sell the University of Ottawa, okay? So you have to sell Ottawa. So everywhere I go now, I have my slides, and in fact, the embassy in, in Beijing asked for a copy of my slides. I compare Canada to the United States, side by side, okay? Tuition fees, health, crime rate, uh, you know, weather, all kinds of things like that. <laughs> And, uh, and the thing, that, and I finish by, uh, by um, the last line, which has no impact except for Canadians in the room, we're better at hockey. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that you have to tell uh, uh, when you recruit, you have to tell people, is that uh, your degree, your Canadian degree, will be recognized in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> for many people, it's very important. University, they come here, they do an undergraduate degree, they want to do a PhD in the States. They have to be told that their undergraduate Canadian degree will be recognized by American universities. So it's very important. Second point, a very minor thing, never thought about this before. Complaint we have, students arrive at the Canadian airport here, or Toronto, or Vancouver, and so on. They're moving to Canada. They have a huge amount of luggage. They need a cart. Guess what? They need a, a coin to get it. Where do you get a coin? 
You know, you need a loony or a toony. When you get a currency abroad, you get paper currency, right? You never get coins. They cannot get a cart at the airport. Very, very simple thing. So we're thinking about sending loonies around. <laughs> Very, very simple stuff. You never think about these things, right? Uh, I just want to go over the point for Google, uh, Google search as well. Because <laughs> uh, the reason why I came to Canada, I'm an international student myself. Uh, I'm a Yemeni international student uh, raised in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the reason why I came to Canada, well, because my brother was here first. So my brother graduated at a degree of uh, computer system engineering from Caltech University. But the, re but the question is, how, my, uh, how did my brother come here in the first place? Well, I remember when my brother finished his high school in Saudi, and my father and my brother were sitting together. Uh, my, my brother was sitting together, and they were typing because my, my father asked my brother, "What do you want to study? What do you want to pursue?" And he said, "Well, IT or technology." And then at first they were searching, I'll be honest, UK. Uh, one of the reasons why, my, I have a couple of families there. And then they said, you know what, no, it's kind of expensive. Uh, and then my brother suggested, how about we check it in US, uh, in US. My, father, my father said, no, Canada. But the, uh, the reason why I believe it's more like, it's more of a, of a reputation. There's more, so many things goes into reputation. But uh, one of the stuff that we feel as interna international students, specifically coming from the other side of the world, like Yemen, where you know, there's so much going on as a wars and stuff like that, we feel that impact of that we're not being welcomed there, even if this is not really the case, but this is what you get from the media. So our first choice and best choice is Canada, which is very more welcoming than most of the countries that I've, uh, I've seen, even in UK, I've been to UK a couple of times. People that are nice, but not as welcoming as, as I've seen in all. Having said that, there are other uh, factors that come into play of how to apply, how fast you get your visa, how fast you get your uh, study permit. I feel, I feel if this could be improved, uh, this is, I know this is a national stuff and people would go into how to rate which country and how fast we give it. But if, if we'd be improved in that sec uh, section specifically, Canada will be the best of the best. Because last time I remember that I was talking to one of my friends about the weather, which is totally different from where I grew up. He said, you know what, I don't care. I'll just go to Canada because I feel it's the best choice I have compared to the US. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so I hate when people say, I don't have a question, but in fact, I don't have a question. I have a statement. So my name is Alexandra Yarrow. I'm the Acting Manager of Diversity and Accessibility at the Ottawa Public Library. And I'm also a member of the OLOC Council. So I just really wanted to extend an invitation, actually, uh, for international students seeking volunteering opportunities or seeking a way to integrate into the community. I think one of the best ways to do that is through the public library. One of our core values is access and inclusion for everyone. All of you are a part of the library already, and it's your place as much as it's anyone else's. So it's a place for international students. I realize, of course, all of your institutions have tremendous libraries, many of which I've visited, many good friends who work in them, but nonetheless, we have programs on a variety of topics, and we have conversation groups in French and in English. So for someone needing one of those programs as an attendee, that's a great opportunity. We're also always recruiting volunteers for those activities, and that's a great way for international students to beef up their CVs. While they're looking for work experience, they can say, I have this volunteering experience. Um, we also did something great last year that uh, was supported by all of the other organizations in the human library where we, you could check out a human being as a book and learn about their life. So I just wanted to kind of get that out there and mention that it is everybody's library, so you're all welcome, which fits in well with the theme. Thanks for your time. Okay, so uh, on behalf of the organizer, I would like to thank uh, the panelists. I know it's been a c'est un exercice périlleux de faire un panel en une heure avec cinq personnes, cinq différentes histoires, 
And I think we covered a lot. There's a, there were a few uh, important issues that were addressed, and I think for for Olive, it's it's important to hear these issues and to be able to to work on it. So, merci beaucoup. Merci à vous.